German letter I'm translating. I have dreamed of reading German so I could read Martin Luther's translation of the Bible because I just love what Luther has to say about his thoughts on translating the Bible into his own native language. It's, it's inspiring stuff. I, I have my own copy of Luther's Bible. I, I just can't read it. So when I heard that the Lutheran church, the church of Martin Luther, that they were going to make their own English translation of the Bible, I jumped all over it. 12 months ago, I thought 2020 was going to be an awesome year because I'm going to be reading the evangelical heritage version of the Bible all year. The Lutheran translation was going to take me through 2020. It's going to be a great year. And while much of 2020 was a bust, I preached my Easter sermon to an empty church. You know what wasn't a bust? My Bible reading. I've read through the Evangelical Heritage Version this year, and I loved it. Sure, there were some places where the translators and editors went in a different direction than I would have, and I, I question their judgment, but I can say that about every single English Bible translation in existence. Overall, though, I felt that it was accurate. I felt it was conservative in sticking to the Hebrew and Greek meaning of the text. I thought they were closer than a lot of other modern English Bibles, as opposed to making it really easy and simple and quickly accessible. I think they went more for, for accuracy than necessarily readability. Uh, I'd put its translation principles somewhat in line with the Christian Standard Bible, which is another translation that, that I love. So I thought this Bible read very well. I didn't feel like it was, it was wooden. And at the end, I think I can say, based on what Luther says in his open letter on translatings, I think Luther would really like this Bible. That's probably the highest praise that I could give to the English Heritage Version. But there was one unexpected benefit of the EHV, and I didn't even think about checking for it when I started reading. I always assume that everyone today is going to base their translation almost exclusively from the critical text perspective of New Testament manuscripts. That means they'll be preferring the few older Alexandrian text while ignoring, for the most part, the majority of manuscripts. The manuscripts that were used as the basis for the biblical text for hundreds of years until we reached the early 20th century. The translators and editors of the EHV surprised me as they were fair and balanced in their approach to textual issues. And from my perspective, they are better than any Bible that I have seen on the market in both their choices for the text and their comments on the text in the notes. I do want to put an asterisk by this claim and say I didn't do a thorough checking of all the textual issues uh, that are in the Bible and how the EHV did with everyone. I didn't go down in my daily Bible reading and made sure I ch double checked every single passage, uh, but this was based on randomly checking several passages in the New Testament. An example of their work is in the longer ending of Mark. They include the longer ending of Mark with no brackets to separate it from the larger text, and they give what I believe is the best opinion on the longer ending of Mark that I've seen in the notes of any Bible. This translation includes verses 9 through 20 because they are included in the vast majority of Greek's manuscripts that have been handed down to us. Evidence for the existence of the longer ending extends back to the second century. In the early centuries of the church, these verses were read in worship services on Easter and Ascension Day. However, a few early manuscripts and early translations omit verses 9 through 20, and a few have a different ending. What an accurate statement of the issues with the longer ending of Mark, and it follows the goal of the translators, which is to be balanced in that it avoids a bias toward any one textual tradition or group of manuscripts. So finally, a group of translators who do not make textual criticism a team sport. I feel like everybody is always on their team. I'm either going to be team tr critical text or team majority text or the specific people who are team textus receptus. And I'm only going to root for the readings that are following my team. 
they examine each text and weigh each one individually on its merits. And I think they did a, did a wonderful job. But I want to end now with, with one major criticism I have of the evangelical heritage version, and specifically to the Wartburg Project who produced it. And I hope someone from that project will watch this review. To you I say, get your Bible out on the market. I love this Bible. I would love to use this Bible in my church, but I'm afraid most people in my church would have a hard time tracking it down to buy a copy. And if I mention the Evangelical Heritage Bible version, they'll say, what's that? So you need to sell it in more locations. And as I write this review and record it, uh, you can't even find it on christianbook.com. Release it in different styles and different sizes. I love my really nice $60 imitation leather version. But right now you have the $60 imitation leather version, a $25 hardcover version, and you can get it on Kindle as well, and that's it. I want more choices for this Bible. This is also a great opportunity to produce the Martin Luther Study Bible. Get a group together to comb through all of Luther's writings and put his what would be his notes on Genesis through Revelation in a Bible that you produce. I love this Bible. I want more people to read it. So I'm calling on my viewers the next time you're going to read through the Bible if it's at the beginning of 2021 or maybe another year in the near future, grab an EHV. Get a copy of this Bible and read it through because I'm telling you the Evangelical Heritage Version ranks up with the best Bibles we have in English today. If you enjoyed this review, I encourage you to subscribe to the Reverie's YouTube channel to stay connected to the wonderful world of Christian literature.